Okay, you guys, Shine is back. Of course, we are practicing all social distancing practices, um, but wanted to kind of get back to um, a lot of topics that I think um, we should be aware of. And today, we're gonna talk with Colton Bell, and he is a runner and he is raising awareness um, for depression, oops, you dropped your book, depression and suicide um, by way of running uh, the Boston Marathon. So we're gonna talk to him a little bit today um, about that. So I'm gonna flip the screen because we're keeping our distance here. Um, if it's gonna let me. Uh, we're just gonna do it this way then. I'm not sure it's gonna let me. <laughs> there you go. All right, so there's Colton and Nora. Say hi. Hi. All right, so talk to us a little bit of who Madison Holleran is um, with that foundation. Who mm -hmm. is she? So Madison Holleran, she was a New Jersey high school athlete, um, deemed by many the best top female athlete in the state. Um, she signed with well, soccer was her favorite sport. Um, she signed with Lehigh uh, University to play soccer, and then the Ivy League came calling. Um, but not for soccer, but for track. Um, so she was so enamored with, with the Ivy League, um, and once she realized that that was in her grasp, she couldn't turn it down, even though track wasn't what she normally loved to do. Um, so as she stepped onto campus and started running track, um, she began to get over. She began to get overwhelmed with the workouts with track, um, trying to keep a social life and keeping up with her academics. Um, throughout the first semester, she started to have depression. She started to, to, to you know, fight the battles with anxiety. And that's not something, as far as we know, that she had before, Correct. right? This was something Correct. that happened while she was in college, which uh, probably isn't yep. uncommon. Right, because there was, there was an interview with ESPN's Kate Fagan um, <laughs> Nora. Um, about a couple years ago, um, and she had asked that same question to her dad. Um, you know, what did she struggle with prior to going to school? And, she said nothing. Mm -hmm. um, she, everything came easy to her. Um, mm -hmm. And her sister Carly um, pretty much says the same thing in the interviews that everything came natural to her. She was awesome at what she did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then once she, she stepped onto campus and she wasn't, you know, being able to keep up to her per sure. standards of perfection, um, things really began to take a toll on her. Um, and in January of her second semester, um, she climbed the stairs of a nine-story uh, parking garage um, and ended up leaping to, to her death. I, and, you know, as a parent, I just, I can't imagine. And when I was watching um, that video, I think hearing from her family and her mm -hmm. friends, I mean, I think they knew she was struggling, mm -hmm. but not... To, the extent. to that extent, mm -hmm. and she kind of led on to, with her family that she was struggling, mm -hmm. um, but she would always mask it with, like in text messages, with an emoji um, mm -hmm. to where, yeah, I'm hurting, but you know it's really not that serious. Um, or even on Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that was what her family have really identified is she was able to see her friends having you know fun at college having mm -hmm. the best four years of their life and she didn't feel like she could keep up and she wasn't having the best four years of her life mm -hmm. um, but in all reality she didn't see that what she was posting was the exact same thing as what they were posting no one no one hangs the hard times on the wall right um, everyone posts just what they want other people to see um, and it, from what it appears that she could make that connection within herself because she in an interview um stated with her mom uh, mom said you look so happy at the in these pictures in this part she goes mom it's just a picture right anyone can fake it for three seconds and i think that is so important well it's important any day um 
but as we are under this crisis and people are even more isolated mm -hmm. um, and people with any mental health issue, I, I would imagine it becomes <laughs> a little bit more exacerbated. Yep. So, I mean, how did you, so what made you connect with her foundation and her story? Okay. Um, so actually back in, when I was in junior high, mm -hmm. that's when I started to battle depression and anxiety mm -hmm. myself. Um, to where I even had the you know the dark suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. at times um, and since then um, in, in working through those tough years of my life um, it's really you know lit a fire in me to really kind of you know do this kind of work which is why I kind of went into counseling um, and growing up my mom she was always in and out of hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, she was anorexic, she was bulimic, mm -hmm. um, depression, getting ECT treatments, which is electric, right. elective, elective. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> no, we get it. But I mean, so, so pretty therapy. severe yes. depression. Um, right. right. To where she was also having suicidal thoughts. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of it is hereditary. Right. Um, which I, I hate to go back to that interview so much, but uh, Madison's dad. Did identify that a lot of it was a mental health issue, and that there is depression that runs on on their side of the family. Um, so she was almost predestined to it, but it just hit at such a perfect storm of a time. So, for you, like um, in your counseling, and then even thinking back to your experience. What was the one thing that brought you out of it? Like, what do you think was the biggest moment that you knew you could overcome it? I would have to say the moment that I trusted my family with it. Okay. That I didn't have to go through it by, by myself. Um, to the moment that I was, I'm gonna say strong enough to ask for help. Okay. Because a lot of people think that asking for help is weakness, right. and it's it's really not. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not meant to to go through this life alone. Mm -hmm. um, we we are social beings, mm -hmm. which is why social distancing is so hard. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's life is meant to be shared with mm -hmm. with ones that we love and the ones that we care. You know, through the good times and the bad. Um, and having those people that we can confide in and know that they have our back um, is something really, uh, really important to have. Um, I mean, my sister was like my second mom. Mm -hmm. when my mom was in and out of the hospitals. Right. Um, to where I, I even toyed around to, you know, having a second mother-son dance uh, right. at my right. wedding. But, I didn't want my mom to take that in the wrong way. Sure. Because uh, my mom is my mom. Right. Um, and I love my mom dearly. Mm -hmm. um, but my sister was, mm -hmm. was kind of like that second mother figure in my life, too, that I was blessed to have. So how do you connect with those in counseling? I'm able to meet them in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's hard to really kind of distance myself mm -hmm. um, from my own experiences, but through training and experience I've, I've been able to, to set aside my my own feelings and my own thoughts my own agenda um, just meet them in those spaces and help them find their own answers to to what's going on because my answer is not going to work for right for them right um, everyone it, in my opinion everyone has the answers within them mm -hmm. sometimes you just got to decode it to see through that fog um, and really find it so if you have um a friend or family member that you are concerned with I mean what advice do you give that support system because I think some people are afraid they don't want to alienate that person they don't want to make them mad or they don't want to put ideas in their heads right. like how do you um, what advice do you give those family members that are concerned about someone like Madison open up those channels mm -hmm. um, you're not going to plant ideas in their head. Mm -hmm. um, chances are, if if they are suicidal, they thought about it before you even brought even, it up. Right. Um, just checking in with them, mm -hmm. knowing that you're not going to judge them, you're not going to love them any less. That uh, you're here for them, that you love them no matter what. Um, and that's 
when I was at Lincoln Prairie when I was a counselor mm -hmm. out there dealing with adolescents. That's a lot. Um, majority of them suicidal mm -hmm. and self-harmers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to rephrase that. Um, kids who self-harm. Right. I don't want to identify them right. as self-harmers. Um, was just working with the families, um, mm -hmm. sitting down, having that conversation, uh, making themselves available then at mm -hmm. any given minute of any given day. That could be three o'clock in the morning, um, which a lot of time it could be because right. they're up, they're hard time sleeping with depression, things like that. Um, and that's mm -hmm. ultimately one of the times that, that you know, they have the most freedom. Right. Um, and feel most alone. Yeah. So how does this change you as a dad? It scares the living daylight. Out. <laughs> I can only imagine. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. Um, but I think it also gives me a little bit of an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, working with with children as, as young as three at Lincoln Prairie, as old mm -hmm. as 17, mm -hmm. um, being able to see the most common signs mm -hmm. of you know alienating themselves, um, not coming out of the rooms, not eating as much or overeating. Right. Um, just watching their patterns change, not hanging out with friends anymore. Um, those jokes, like with Madison, mm -hmm. that I'm not okay, laughy face emoji. Right. Um, nine times out of ten aren't jokes. Right. Um, that's just the way that they are able to reach out with that mask mm -hmm. on, no pun intended. Um, right. Uh, so, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, even if, if you have the slightest gut feeling that something's off, something's wrong, um, it's not going to hurt just to check in and make yourself available to, mm -hmm. to any child in need, not just mm -hmm. your own. So now you're a runner. Now what yep. number uh, marathon is this for you? How many have you run? So I'm running the Indianapolis Marathon in uh -huh. November, mm -hmm. um, and that'll be my Boston qualifier. Oh, okay, gotcha, yes. gotcha, okay. Um, so I got to run under... A three-hour marathon. Holy cow! Um, <laughs> but just because if I run under three doesn't mean I'm in. Yeah. It's competitive. Right. So I'm shooting for a two fifty-five, two hours, fifty-five minutes. And is that totally doable for you? Like should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. because I got all this training that mm -hmm. I'm working on. And that's kind of your therapy, right? It is. It's my release. It's I'm able to get out, get in my own world. Okay. Um, but. Indy will be number three for me. Okay. I ran the inaugural Springfield Marathon here. Um, I ran the Walt Disney Marathon. Okay. Um, which was awesome, running through Cinderella's yeah, Castle yeah. all the way up at 6 a.m. was cool. <laughs> oh, Nora, um, you're fine, baby. Um, and then Indy, it's super flat. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it should be a, a really good opportunity to, to qualify. And the last three miles are downhill, which helps. So that should help. Yep. So what we're going to do is, so you are actually raising awareness yep. for Madison Holleran's Foundation. Yep. Hi, Nora. Hi. And so we're going to put a link there because I think everything helps. Um, yeah, yeah, show yep. us that. Yep, this is the book, mm -hmm. um, What Made Maddie Run um, by Kate Fagan. Uh, she's an ESPN, she was an ESPN columnist. Um, and she actually donated 100 bucks, which wow, was really cool. That's I, awesome. I reached out to her on Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's um, great. And yeah, she was kind enough to donate. Um, so really, really extremely blessed. Uh, so I think it's really important because I think as the social isolation continues, we're going to see more cases. Yep. And to increase that awareness. So we're going to also post the link to that foundation. Oh, Nora, Nora. And if, you, if anybody can give five bucks, ten yep. bucks, it doesn't have to be a hundred. Nope. I think any little bit helps. And then the closer that you get to your race, um, we will kind of get people updated. And just so everybody knows, um, with the foundation, um, they're actually doing a lot of advocacy work with legislature as well. Mm -hmm. They actually have the, the Madison Holleran um, um, bill or whatever they mm -hmm. call it over in New Jersey mm -hmm. um, for suicide prevention yes. um, and now they have suicide um, prevention counselors people available 24 hours around the clock mm -hmm. um, and they're also uh, going around doing guest uh, guest speaking um, things like that too to, to incoming college freshmen uh, high schools things like that and they actually have recently have um, uh, made that greater 
are more broad sure. to people of all ages because right. what they're seeing is that it's not just a adolescent thing it's it's an every age thing really uh, it's, but it, I mean it's really prevalent in the adolescent age is second leading cause of death right um, right right so, um, all right well thank you for sharing thank you miss Nora hi because Nora you run with Nora right yep. you kind of have her in the carrier. I do my long runs every day or That's every awesome. weekend with her, yeah. That's good uh, daddy uh, Nora yeah. time. <laughs> Mommy gets some alone time. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so everybody uh, remember I'm going to post the link um, and if you'd like to donate five bucks, ten bucks, what have you to the foundation. Say thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. We're going to twist it around. All right, thanks everybody.